This heat wave is no joke. Not only are the plants suffering from the high temperatures and no rain, but the ducks have started coming into the goat pan and getting in their water, making it dirty so that we have to empty it and refill it with fresh water or the goats won't drink. Kind of a pain. There's only three ducks that are free range and we do have a trough of water for them over by the chicken tractors, but they've been coming over into the goat area because it's more shaded is what my guess is. So I'm providing a couple of new troughs for them that are gonna be left more accessible. And we're setting this trough up on some cinder blocks to helpfully keep it from their abilities of getting into it and dirtying it again. But we don't waste anything on this homestead, especially not water during critical heat and almost drought. So we are using that duck water to water the garden, which is a lot of work going back and forth with a bucket, but better than wasting it. All right, the last bucket has been emptied. I have to spill a little to get it in there, but most of it was rescued for the garden. And now I'm gonna take this trough and put it on these cinder blocks. And that should be at a height that the ducks won't be able to reach it. And I've got water for the ducks right there so that if they do come looking, they'll have an easy access. And the goats are gonna get fresh, clean water. Hopefully, this will stay clean. Autumn, do you just love the fallen leaves? This heat wave is making our oaks and pecans drop leaves. Yeah, but you love them. They're like potato chips. Nom, 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 nom. She's going around the whole paddock, picking up all the little leaves that she finds and gobbling them up. You're one lucky spoiled goat, Autumn. Yes, you are. You're too cute. All right. That is good and full of nice clean water. So now it's time. So normally I leave the chicken chores for the evening when Ryan gets off of work and gets ready to put the goats up. He'll come out here and do the chickens, get all their waters refilled and feed them and move them. So today I'm not going to move them because it's just too much work on my body right now in this heat, but I am going to make sure that they all have water and food because it's Rowan's birthday. And when he gets home, when Ryan gets home, we're gonna go out to eat and we're gonna go to Target and let him pick out a present and pick up a cake on our way home. So that should be fun. He's really excited. He has been counting down the days to his birthday. So he's super, super excited to have a fun day. That's just what he wants to do. So that's what we're gonna do. While a lot goes into keeping up the homestead during severe heat wave like this, where the temperatures are in the high 90s for weeks on end with no chance of rain in sight, it means lots of extra watering for the garden. It means lots of extra water for the animals and making sure everybody has shade. It also means that we have to hydrate ourselves and we have to get shade ourselves. So that means not working in the middle part of the day. There's just not much that can be done when the temperatures reach this level. But we can appreciate the few advantages. One thing that I noticed and I pointed out to Ryan yesterday is, knock on wood, there hasn't been flies all over us when we're doing chores. There hasn't been flies coming in the house. They, they started to. When the temperatures warmed up, we started seeing flies and I was like, oh, fly season again. But when it got so hot, even the flies are not active. That's when you know you're really in a Georgia heat wave. So that's been a nice benefit. 
and knowing that the tomatoes love high temperatures and they're going to grow really well as long as I keep them watered. So these tomatoes were planted by Robert at Daybird Aviaries. You should go check out his channel. I'm mentioning him again because he's amazing and I love him and his family. Check these babies out. Look at that. They were like two inches high when I put them in the ground. When Robert put them in the ground. <laughs> They have really done superb. So as long as I keep them watered, they're not gonna suffer from too much heat stress, but some varieties do. So that's important to keep in mind when you start to see leaves that are curling down or tightening up, they start to curl in a little bit. But some of this I'm starting to worry could be herbicide damage because of the hay that we used in the garden last year. I'm hoping not. Most of them seem to be doing okay. Some of them definitely are curling in the leaves. Heat stress is usually um, shown through curling of the leaves. It's the way the plant tries to reduce its surface size to limit the amount of sun and heat it's receiving. So while we may lose our early spring brassicas, these tomatoes that we planted should be able to survive this heat. Broccoli, not so much. <laughs> Caterpillars have kind of got to it anyway. My poor peas that we were just eating off of a couple of days ago have shriveled up crispy. Just a little bit of green left to them, but I doubt we'll see any more peas to snack on in the garden this season. And that's okay. We can't have everything perfect all of the time. Those who do have everything perfect all of the time either have a lot of money or a lot of help. I don't have either, so I am doing the darn best I can. <laughs> and it is enough, because I am enough, and my garden is enough, and my animals are enough. And this heat, it's enough already. Whew, I'm ready for the fall already. No, not really. Although I am really looking forward to an amazing fall garden.